Today we're going to be moving on to unsaturated hydrocarbons. The alkanes were the saturated and now we're going to have the unsaturated hydrocarbons and we're going to be learning how to name those and we're also going to learn a simple reaction that takes place um, with these unsaturated hydrocarbons. Um, so to start with, there are two classifications of the unsaturated hydrocarbons. You can either have an alkene, which means it contains a double bond, or you can have an alkyne, which means it contains a triple bond. So we will start with learning how to name the alkenes. And again, the alkenes are going to have double bonds in them. And so we'll start with um, a real simple one. Um, when you name these guys, you need to make sure that you give the double bond the lowest possible number when you number the chain. So for this one, um, it's not going to make any difference which end I number the chain from, because if I number it from this end, one, two, three, four, the double bond's on the number two carbon. Um, and if I number it from this end, one, two, the double bond's also on the number two carbon. So regardless of which way you number this one, this one is going to be classified as 2-butene, okay? So I, you have to specify where that double bond is in the carbon chain, okay? So now if I look at this one, this one obviously it is going to make a difference on which end I number from because if I start from here, one, two, three, the, car the double bond's on the third carbon. If I number from this end, it's going to be on the no number one carbon, okay? So here, this one has to be my number one carbon. So this one is going to be one butene. Alrighty. If um, you have a, uh, an alkene, you have to make sure that you are num numbering the longest chain, but it has to contain the double bond. You may have a longer chain, but if it doesn't contain the double bond, that's not the proper way to name it. So in this example here, the one containing the double bond has one, two, three, four, five, six, if I go this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, if I go this way. And so either way, I'm gonna name it as a hexene. What you don't wanna do is to say, oh, well, my longest chain is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so I'm gonna name it as a heptane. No, we're not gonna do that because um, the, there's, there's actually a whole listing of priorities as to, as to what takes priority in, in naming things, and double bonds are gonna take priority over all these single bonds, so you have to include this double bond when you number it. You also, again, are gonna want to give the double bond the lowest possible number. So I've got to start numbering from this end, okay? So I'm gonna go one, two, three, and it doesn't matter if I go this way or if I go this way, because it's gonna be the same compound. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. That's gonna be a hexene. And off the number three carbon, I have a propyl group. So this one is going to be three propyl. And then I have to tell where the double bond is. So it's going to be one hexene, three propyl, one hexene. Okay. It's not a heptane. It's a hexene. Okay. Um, same type of thing down here. You have to, have to make sure that you number so that the double bond and the constituents have the lowest possible number. Um, if you have to make a choice between your, your, the things that are hanging off of it, your groups that are hanging off of it, and the double bond, the double bond is going to take priority. So here um, I have a one, two, three, four, five carbon chain, and both the substituent group and the double bond have the same number. So this one is going to be two methyl, two pentene. Okay. Now this one up here, you can see that I, it appears that I have a choice because I could start numbering from this end to give the methyl the lowest possible number, or I could start numbering from this end to give the double bond the lowest possible number. Well, as I mentioned before, the double bond is going to take priority over off of any of these alkyl groups. So that means that I have to start numbering from this end down here. So this is going to be my number one carbon. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, 
five is what the substituent group is going to have be numbered. So it's going to be five methyl. And then the double bond is on the one, two, third carbon. So it's between the third and the fourth, but we're going to use the lower number. So it's going to be three. Oh, that was kind of sloppy. Five methyl, three, and I have four, five, six, seven. So it's going to be a heptene. Five methyl, three heptene. Okay. All right. Here I have a cyclo. And whenever you have a, a um, carbon compound in a ring, this double bond has to be number one. And then the other end of the double bond is number two. So I could start here and go one, two, three, four, five. Or I could start here and go one, two, three, four, five. Remember I told you before, it doesn't matter if I go clockwise or if I go counterclockwise. But in this case, I also have a methyl group hanging off up here and I want to give it the lowest possible number. So that means this is going to be one, this is going to be two, this is going to be three. Okay, so I'm going to name this piece first. So I'm going to have three methyl and then it's going to be cyclopentene. Again, I don't need the number, I don't need to say 3-methyl-1-cyclopentene because automatically, because of the IUPAC rules, I'm going to know that that double bond is on the number one carbon if it's a cyclo compound, so I don't have to put the one in there, okay? Um, similar situation here, I have a cyclohexene. Um, these two carbons have to be 1 and 2, so it could be 1, 2, 3, 4. Or I could start here and go one, two, three, four. Well, obviously I'm going to go this direction because that gives the groups hanging off of it the smaller numbers. So this is going to be one, this will be two, this will be three, this will be four. Whoops, couldn't see that, could you? Okay, there's four. Okay, so, um, and just to complete it, it's going to be five and six, but I don't, I don't need to number all of those. So here um, I have an ethyl group. And I have a methyl group, so the ethyl comes first in alphabetical order, so it's going to be 4-ethyl, 3-methyl. And again, because it's, an, because it's a cyclic compound, the double bond is automatically on the first carbon, so I can just continue the same word, and I'm, I'm going to put it down here. It should be all part of the same word. Um, I just don't have enough space there, so it's going to be cyclo hexene. Okay, 3-ethyl, 4-methyl cyclohexene. All right. It is possible to have two double bonds in the same compound. And so at that point, it's called a diene. And so again, numbering needs to be such that you give them the lowest possible number. Obviously here, it doesn't matter which end I number from because from um, either end, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, or from this end, it's going to be 1, it's going to be one and three either way. So the name of this compound is going to be one comma three butadiene. The di goes before the suffix to show that there are, are two double bonds in there. One, three butadiene. Okay. Um, down here, I actually have three triple bonds and the multiple bonds take priority over any groups hanging off of it. So that means that I have to start numbering from this end down here. Um, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to have six methyl. And then I have, a, I have a double bond on number one, on number three, and number five. So it's going to be one comma three comma five dash hepta triene. Okay. So those are all alkenes, which have double bonds. An alkyne is going to have a triple bond in it. And so here, the triple bond is on uh, carbon number two. So this is going to be named as 
butyne, B-U-T-Y-N-E, butyne, okay? Same thing here, I've got a triple bond, I have a substituent hanging off of it. Now, sometimes when you have something like this, um, I have found it easier that I might actually need to draw it out and actually hang that substituent off of there so I can see where it's coming from. So I might, um, like over in the margin someplace, if I had a worksheet, I might go C, and then I had a triple bond, and then there's a C, and there's a C, and there's a C, and there's a C hanging off of it, and there's a C. Because when I draw it this way, sometimes it's a little bit easier to see what number that is hanging off of. So if that helps you, you might wanna do that. Okay, so on this one, I have one, two, three, four, five in the main chain, so it's going to be a pentine. This methyl group is hanging off the number four. So the name of this one is going to be four methyl one pentine. Okay. Okay. Here's one that has both a double and a triple bond. What am I going to do with that? When I name these, I always name them as an enine, regardless of what the numbers are going to be. And I need to number them so that the lowest possible numbers are used. So if I start here, if this is one, two, three, four, five, the triple bond has a one, the double bond has a three. If I start it from the other bond or from the other end, then this one is a two and this one is a four. Well, one and three are lower than two and four. So I have to name it using the one and the three. Um, my base is going to be um, a, a pentene. So when I name this, what I'm gonna have is a three, you name the double bond first. So it's three pentene one ein. Okay, two suffixes basically, but I have a number telling where each one of those of those multiple bonds is. All right, so that's the naming portion of it. Um, the author of your textbook also mentions that you can do what's called an addition reaction. And in an addition reaction, what happens is that you take an alkene or an alkyne, something with a, with a double bond, and you put that, you react it with hydrogen in the presence of a catalyst. When you do that, the multiple bonds are broken and the hydrogen will then go in and attach itself to the carbons um, wherever those double bonds or triple bonds had been and I form an alkane. So just as an example, if I have, what would the name of this one be? Just real quick here. I have one, two, three um, as my base. And so this is going to be propine, right? If you said that, you were right. Would I need a number on that one? I actually wouldn't because if even if it were on the other side, there's no other place that that triple bond can be. It has to be on the number one carbon. It has to be between the first and the second one because there's, there's no other place for it to be, okay? So if I add hydrogen to it, I'm gonna break all the multiple bonds and I'm gonna put um, hydrogen atoms in so that each carbon has um, four bonds to it. And so that means in this particular case, um, I'm going to have to add two moles of hydrogen. So um, this propine then becomes a propane when I add the hydrogen. Similarly, if I would have just started with, um, let's say that I had a propene, I had CH2. CH, CH3, and I was gonna add hydrogen to that. In this case, I'd only need one mole of hydrogen, and then if I reacted that in the presence of a catalyst, I would still end up with the same thing. I'd still end up with CH3, CH2, CH3. It's just that when I react it with um, the alkene, I just need one mole of hydrogen, where if I react it with the alkyne, I'm gonna need two moles of hydrogen because I've gotta add more hydrogen to it to make it saturated. Okay, so alkenes, alkynes, and addition reactions. That was a lot, but I know you can do it.